Hello, this is the Ralph Bivens Project. I'm Ralph Bivens. We're here today to talk about real estate. We're here today to talk about growth. We're here today to talk about transactions and the things impacting our city and our state. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about today, and uh, we're lucky to have um, Amy Bernstein, Bernstein Realty, uh, to talk with us. She's, uh, she's really knowledgeable about what's going on in the residential market. And our residential market has been just phenomenal. Um, they're talking about it around the nation and uh, it's all, uh, in the news. And it's, it's something to talk about. We've had great sales. We've had you know, some ups and downs, but things are really going uh, pretty good, pretty good. We have, uh, you know, I think 2020, I know 2020 was the biggest year ever in terms of the number of homes sold. It was off the charts, a record setter. And so just, uh, Amy, why, why was 2020 so great? Uh, what, uh, what made it so good and for so many people and for so many people in your line of business and seemed like a, a heck of a lot of activity. So 2020 was an interesting year. Um, it started out very strong. I think, um, um, you know, January and February are generally always very strong years. I mean, strong months for us. And then the um, coronavirus hit in March. And um, it was a very interesting time because mm. the entire real estate market appeared to have shut down in March. Sellers did not want people in their homes. Buyers didn't want to go into the homes. Nobody wanted to leave their homes. So from March, April, really through May, we had to quickly transition not only Bernstein Realty as a company, but um, the way the agents do business, we had the entire city had to transition on how we were doing business. And most of that became online. So we were showing homes virtually. Um, we would go into the homes and we would video them and um, instead of actually going to open houses, people were going online and doing virtual open houses. They were looking at the homes online. Um, everything was really very different quickly. So our sales came not to a halt like they did in March, but in April and May, they definitely slowed while we got used to this new normal. And then once everybody got into the groove and the zone of, of wearing masks and sanitizing homes and how to do things virtually. And then by May, we were going back into the homes with a different way of showing them by wearing gloves and wearing shoe covers and having the listing agent open all the doors so that the consumers didn't have to open doors. And everybody felt pretty safe again and going back. So in my heart of hearts, we had this cooped up demand from March, April, and May of people that were really cabin fever and wanted to get out and see homes. And so it was just like the floodgates opened in May and people started going back out and looking at homes and making offers on homes and, and what have you. And then um, what happens then after the election, I think, you know, whether you were um, a Democrat or Republican or neither, um, you you know, the election was over and we were onward and upward, whether you liked the outcome or didn't like the outcome, all of that hanging over our heads and all of that uh, uncertainty kind of got buried and the market just became crazy. I have never seen a October, November and December as busy as, uh, as it was. And so I think it was a combination of just the appreciation of the customer for being able to get out and realizing they wanted to get out and um, feeling confident in getting out and then feeling confident after the election that we were moving, this was our new normal and, and uh, people wanted to migrate to the new normal and get out there and fear of interest rates going up, I think is a huge, huge driver. But more than anything, I think that um, what Corona did for many is realize that home ownership is very important mm -hmm. because they, if, if you were in an apartment or something where you felt a little bit too 
closed in or too close to your loved ones, you wanted more space. Okay. So um, we we that's what we when you're, you know, living in a high rise, you think, "Ooh, I'm in an elevator with strangers." And yes, so just the fear of you know what was happening with COVID. The people want to have a backyard. They want to have a little more space. Yes. And so I think that's also what contributed to a really banner 2020 is people wanting to get a home so they could have a yard and they can have more space. Or even if they didn't have a yard, that they had more square footage to to um, spread out. And and also the office industry, you know, we 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 are seeing more and more people working from home. And so um, what we're our requests now are really that people want home offices and many times two home offices, which mean they need means they need to get a new home that can accommodate their new normal. So I think that's a lo very long answer to your short question of what made 2020 so great. Well, let, let's back up for a second on the on the, the home office. Uh, yeah, a lot of these houses uh, they, they 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 don't have much of a home office, or are people just converting bedrooms or what what are they doing to come up with the home office space so it's interesting Ralph we're seeing formal living rooms definitely turn into home offices we're seeing a little nook a little space in the master bedroom to be a home office a designated area I've seen home office I've seen the most creative home offices over the last several months I've seen them in a hallway set up dedicated to being a home office. Um, part of the bedroom, I've seen bedrooms converted to home offices, but home offices today are a very, very, uh, uh, it's almost a must to have. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you, you, you think that a lot of people are predicting that the workplace is not going to be the same anymore, you may still have go into the office three days a week or four days a week or two days a week, but you know, you're still have to do be at home and um, have an office at home and be able to do, you know, a Zoom call at home without, you know, the dog barking or the kids running through or something you know, or being a big mess in the background. You know, that would be my look, huge issue. Look at my, look at my hold on. background. Hey, nobody wants to see my, <laughs> <laughs> hide out, hide out. Oh, no, please. But, uh, but yeah, you have to have that. And app, I mean, it's, it's okay at first, you know, the first time, uh, your little four-year-old son comes in and bang, bang, bang. You know, hey, daddy, yeah, whatever. During the COVID, you know, that was okay. We're getting used to it. This is this. We're all working through this thing. But in the long term, if we're going to be working out of the office a lot more, um, you know, after a while, you need to have a kind of a professional environment. Uh, Absolutely. Think, you know, you I'm a <laughs> the patient's going to wear it then. It's true. It's true. You have to have a room where you can go in and close. And, um, you know, as much as everyone loves Jimmy Kimmel, I think that uh, they're, they're happy to see Jimmy Kimmel back in a studio again. You know, so it, 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 it is, it is different. And we're learning how to make our home offices look like, uh, you know, are totally functional, just like being in the office. So I can do everything sitting in this room that I can actually do in the office. And I'm in the field so much that, um, sometimes I'm just in the field and I run back home and back in the field and just makes it easier for me for sure. And what about builders are, are built? You deal with home builders a lot I, I, by now you know, new designs, uh, even, even in custom home markets are, are bound to be responding and, you know, in a tangible physical way with their designs and what they're actually building. The home builders, if you, uh, that feedback from them or notice what the architects are doing as they design. Absolutely. I, I think you're going to see formal living rooms really becoming a thing of the past because that home office is much more prevalent than, or, and much need, more needed than the, um, the home office is very needed. And you have so often you have dual income families. So, um, and they don't want to work together. So I've seen partners desks where, they're together working, but more often than not, you're seeing one up and one down because they, they, you know, living together and working together, that's a lot of together, isn't it? So yeah. I think that uh, everybody wants to be able to have their own space. The divorce rates can go up some sooner or later with all this togetherness. You can only take so much. I, I know. 
actually that's that's um interesting that you said that we did get a lot of calls at the end of 2020 from that situation where you know people were saying that they need to sell their home their life is going in a different direction and you know usually when you're their realtor you've you've become pretty close with people and well i'm sorry to hear that is everything okay yes just that you know or you say what happened and they'll say corona happened corona happened it was just too much a little too much so um i think it changed a lot of people's lives in a lot of different ways yeah, that, that makes sense that makes sense. And on the flip side on the flip side you know we saw people that really wanted either a larger home to be able to stay together and work at home and um and they wanted the kids to be able to you know run around and get their energy out and so yards have become so important two offices have become so important or room for it but we also are seeing that the vacation home has become a very very uh popular segment of our market right now so if you went to galveston and you tried looking for a home a lot of them would already be sale pending, sale pending. So many, it comes on and goes off. It comes on and goes off so quickly. Conroe, um, someplace where you don't have to get on a plane, but you can yeah. actually just take a drive. Country homes, those type of uh, properties out in Fulcher where there's more land. We're seeing those pop those properties becoming very, very important. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I don't know if this trend will last, but you're right. You, want, you don't want to get on a plane. You don't want to, you know, but you would like to change the scene. And since you're going to, if you got good connection out there, if you can get the internet and if you get good phone, you can work just about anywhere. Um, and then, yeah, you know, why, why you get so much more square footage? Uh, you know, I've heard from land brokers uh, saying that their, their land is on fire, you know, where these, because a lot of people say, hey, I can get a lot more square footage way, way out there. And I'm, you know, ready to get out of an apartment, whatever it is, this, the housing market is uh, unbelievable for builders. Builders, they just came out with some numbers. Uh, they're building at a pace right now. Uh, it's over in about nine and a half million homes annualized, you know, uh, or 900,000 homes annualized. Uh, that's a rate which is very, very strong. We haven't seen that happen on a national basis. And you, you can see it. You, I've been out showing and in the suburbs, uh, you can walk into a new home community and you may have to wait 30, 45 minutes before a salesperson can see you. Yeah. And, um, and you'll just see so many people um, walking through the communities and the existing inventory is not there. So at any given time, I could go into a neighborhood and say, I want to see um, a home that, you know, my buyer could possibly close on in the next 30, 60, 90 days. And they don't have the inventory. They're sold. Mm -hmm. So it, it is truly amazing. It's a good thing. I know uh, yes, yesterday, a home builder is publicly traded. You know, they've got a report quarterly about their sales and stuff. And annually, their annual sales, LGI Homes, which is based in the woodlands, they become um, a more attainable home, but their income for 2020 was up 81%. Wow. Or in 2019. So they're selling a record amount of new homes and they put them up as fast as you can. And yeah. I'm sure they got a heck of a backlog. Yes, that's amazing. And, and two, after you buy a new home, a lot of times, you know, you will book an appointment to get into the design center to make all your selections and today the the backup to even get in a design center takes a little bit longer so you're excited you just contracted for that new home and you're ready to go pick out your cabinets and your countertops and your flooring and you may have to wait 10 days before you do that and so with some builders not all but with some it's that's, that's uh, um tough and, and i guess you know we all know that you know low rates uh, which i think the fed the federal reserve has been signaling that you know, rates are going to remain low for a while. Uh, they're not going to, you know, which I think is a good thing. <laughs> Let's make sure there are a lot of segments of the economy that still haven't recovered. But uh, I think you can refi right now for under 3%. Under 3 yes. That's if, you, if you have good credit, under 3 
It's like rates like grandpa used to have, you know, it's something that's amazing. What, what was your uh, first home interest rate? Well, that was back in the eighties and mine as well. It was like, it, it, I don't know. It was double digit. I believe, I believe it's over 10. Yeah. Mine was uh, 16 yeah. and seven eighths. 16 and seven eighths. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That's uh, that's yeah. That's the way it was in the eighties. You know, yeah. it was a totally different thing. Uh, uh, but yeah, mine was double digits, but it was high. You know, hey. I remember when they got to single digits, we were all so excited. Like, oh my God, single digit interest rates. This is amazing. I got my first one was an ARM, you know, adjustable rate mortgage of a uh -huh. year, and which was a great, turned out to be a great thing, you know, because I, whatever I bought it at, it kept going down every year. And pretty soon I, it got to what sounded like a reasonable um, rate, you know, so it was right. Cool. I hope that hopefully that's going to. Or do you hear that very much? Or what uh, you think that I, I, is, is the is the motivation of rate? Um, how's that? What's how how do people responding to that? Do they talk about hey, we got to get this done before they click up the rates? Or? Yes, absolutely. We just had a sales meeting right before I got on this call with you, and we talked about that. Um, interest rates are a big driver today. They, you know, this is. I don't think in my career we'll ever see rates like this again. And so um, they're definitely a real driver for many first time home buyers. They can own cheaper than they can rent. You know, you have um, a young person buying their first home and, and they get a roommate in there and it just helps offset the payment and they can own much, much less than paying rental rates, which many times are very high. Um, but I have heard, um, you know, just some conversation that rates may be going up. So that could be a driver in this market right now. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that as busy as 2020 was, 2021, 2021 is twice as busy. <laughs> so I, I mean, January and February are, January was amazing. February until this last freeze that we had, mm -hmm. it, it, our phones, uh, it, we just, we, our sales are very up. Uh, uh, from yeah. where, where you know, Houston Association of Realtors, I think their number was January of 2021 versus January of 2020 was up 28 percent or something. It was it amazing, amazing gain month of month over month for the last year. In all in all segments of the market, right? I mean, it it's it it was you know sometimes you hear segments doing well, um, but now all segments of the market are doing well. Well, you know, we've been doing um, the Ralph Bivens project here for several months, and we've never done this before. But when you mentioned the the uh, you know the the bad weather that we've had recently, the freezing weather across Texas that was so horrible, uh, just want to discuss that a little bit. So, so my first my first thing, I don't know, we'll just test it out. See if you can see this. Um, oh, I've seen those. <laughs> I don't want to see them anymore. <laughs> this is a half inch piece of copper pipe. And, uh, you know, it, it was in my house. It was actually in the garage wall to the exterior of the house. And uh, it went to, you know, one of the faucets outside where you hook up the hose, the hose bib. And it was, um, it was there. So there's brick, no insulation. There's brick, you know, some studs, a couple of studs here, uh, two by fours, and um, water was spewing out the brick. Uh, two streams of water spewing out of the brick at the at the foundation, you know, and you, and it was coming down on the floor of the garage. I couldn't tell where it's. I looked around my, all the attics, thought, you know, where's this coming from? And then I figured out there was this there was this pipe. Well, I didn't figure it out. The plumber had to come and figure out, well, there's a little pipe there. And you can see that crack. It just froze up when they turned off the electricity to, um, you know, whatever, which happened all across Texas. Pipes like thousands and thousands of these pipes broke somewhere in the attic, and, uh, which is really horrible. People in the attic and it comes down and they, I've seen a house, uh, a friend that their house, Pipes and egg brushed last week. 
and everything came down. All the sheetrock, they weren't there. All the sheetrock came down in the ceiling, all the, the, you know, the insulation, everything just came down and uh, into the floor. I don't know. It's horrible. And the sand, the kitchen was below that on the first floor and that got, oh, I don't know, but it looked like, hey, this could be a $50,000 deal. Uh, but these pipes were everywhere. I mean, pipes were breaking everywhere because it was record cold. And, you know, uh, some places, some builders, and we got to think about, you know, insulating our pipes for the future, for one thing, because uh, it could get, because could happen again, I suppose. But tell us about all the, all these pipes broken and their, you know, agents. And, and we, you know, you were interviewed for the, our website, a story we had there, realtynewsreport.com, about some of the impact on, on you know, the, housing market what did you do when people your house your house is under contract to be sold and all of a sudden this catastrophe happens and this puts people like you and you know and i know you must be uh, really had a frenzy going with trying to handle all these things tell us a little bit about that so um sorry for that pipe breaking in your house i i was in bed one night and i heard grip drip Drip. I thought it was my ice maker just melting because the electric was off. So I went to the kitchen and then I saw that water was coming out of three different fixtures, like the smoke detector, the alarm, the recess lighting and the AC vent. And so, um, you know, quickly went and turned the water off. But um, uh, I, I, too, I have a ceiling that's down in the kitchen. So I, 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 I saw those copper pipes and they'll, they'll probably haunt me forever because the uh, person that took care of my home went in the attic and said, I saw three leaks. And, oh. and the problem really is finding the replacement parts right now at any plumber's supply or any Home Depot or Lowe's or where have you, th those shelves are empty. So f you're lucky that you've gotten it fixed because that's one of the things that's really hard is a getting a plumber out there but B, um, finding the parts once the plumber identifies the problem, how to get it fixed. So um, uh, supplies are a real shortage. But um, so that's a shame just personally for all these people that are suffering like that right now um, because they can't turn the water back on in their homes until the pipes are fixed. So uh, I'm not sure what's more important, electric or water. But if I had a guess today, I'd probably say water. I don't know. They're both pretty important, but water is. Being without it for three or four days last week, I kind of agree. You know, yeah. I wanted to take a shower so bad. Yeah, I just wanted that shower. I wanted that hot shower. So a cold shower oh, became a second. Oh yeah. Hot <laughs> but, shower. Um, okay. Definitely. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> I, I, oh my God, I've never been so happy to see water. But at, um, but at the end of the day, it has affected the real estate market quite a bit. So um, I know for me personally, I had several homes that were supposed to close this week and some were damaged as a result of this. So there's a, a delay there to get it fixed before um, it can be closed. Um, number two, um, the lenders are putting, many lenders are putting stipulations on that the home has to get reinspected with water on again before they will fund the loan. So finding those inspectors to go out there is A, putting an, a, necess an unnecess new cost on the transaction and B, um, finding the inspector to go out there to do that quickly is not easy either. So that's pushed a lot of closings back. And think about these people that are ready to move in or, or their apartment lease is ending or they've sold their home and they need to get out of their home or um, they're moving here and they're in a, they're in their furniture and everything's coming. It's a mess, but until the lender gives their approval and they see that water on and it's not having any leaks, um, lenders are really cracking down on that. So, um, uh, we just had a sales meeting just now. And one of my agents, Mark McNitt said that one of his lenders said, because it's so hard to get an inspector out there to look at that, um, that if the agent went over there and turned the water on, and sh then walk through the house and sh shows the water's on and then walks around the house and shows there's no leaks, then the lender will go ahead and fund. Oh, 
but that good. condition is, is happening. That's too good. That's that's it, so logical. You know, it's true. It's true. Be, you got video evidence right there. Yes. So we're we're definitely seeing closings being pushed back as a result, and we're seeing homes that are being pushed back because there's water damage. I um, and it needs to be corrected. I was showing this weekend. And I would say I at least had five homes that the seller said no showings because we're fixing our home, which is really just terrible. Did they take the step of pulling them off the market or take them off the MLS? Or? No, a lot of them are still on the MLS. I think you'll see some that will show withdrawn, but most of them left it on in hopes that they can get it fixed. And it's just on a status called do not show. So they call the agent. And we call to make the appointment and they say it's on a do not show right now because of that happening. And, and for many times, though, um, the buyers were excited that they had contracted for a home and they if there were no problems and no leaks, they were like, well, this is a good home. This is this the pipes. Yeah. Definitely. So it was like the 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 water test, basically. Some people say an acid test. This was the water test. <laughs> so. Well, you know what it reminds me of, sort of? is uh you know hurricane harvey hurricane i know you were there's kind of a flooding test you were really you know some of the areas where you work a lot memorial yeah. you know marlin bel air around with a lot of these areas are really hit pretty hard really hard during yes harvey uh houses with four feet of water and, and, and everything it's just just some horrible stuff uh how how that i know a lot of like well, particularly in places like Bel Air or Maryland, where there's, you know, 1950s housing stock, uh, and I don't know if it made you know, economic sense to replace those or to repair those homes, and so a lot of them are being torn down. And, and builders, and it looks to me like there's a building boom with those uh, um, when they're tearing down the old houses and building new ones. Uh, oh yes. Give me your evaluation of those markets that were hit really hard and during that uh, during the flood you know, the markets are thriving right now the homes that were hit during the flood and and it's interesting you know when a home floods and it's fixed use harvey as an example um in the beginning everybody's like nope not going to buy a flooded house mm -hmm. never going to buy a home that's flooded never going to buy a home that's flooded and so as a result the um our association changed our sellers disclosures now and our sellers disclosures now reference flooding in two different ways number one from a rain event and number two from a reservoir release mm -hmm. because there were many people that felt like if it flooded during that reservoir release it's less likely to happen again that was truly an event that uh, has not ever happened in my lifetime that I that I know of or definitely my career for 40 years I haven't seen the reservoir release affect the Houston real estate market so I think there's a lot of people that go well if it flooded during the reservoir release we feel a little more confident that it it's, it's less likely to happen again it's not unlikely I mean it's not a definitely no but anything happen again right because of rain you know that that doesn't happen every day yes yes so so they changed the seller's disclosure so we saw people loosen up uh if the home had been flooded during uh, the reservoir release they felt a little less nervous about buying the home and the focus really became how was it repaired was it repaired professionally was uh the proper water remediation steps done to avoid mold in the future that, that became more of the focus than will it happen again. But on the other areas like Meyerland and Brace Heights and areas that uh, even Bel Air inside the loop, Southdale, many of those homes flooded, we are seeing that people aren't, they, there are still those buyers that will say, nope, never going to buy a home that's flooded, ever. Mm -hmm. And then you're seeing as the, especially in a neighborhood like Bel Air, a little um, section of Bel Air inside the loop called Southdale, in the beginning, I had customers that said, I'm never going to buy a home that flooded. So they didn't. But now the inventory is so limited that and there is a differential between it. You do take a financial loss on your home when the home's flooded because it does have it stigmatizes your home. Um, and so you're seeing buyers less um, a little more open to a home that's flooded as inventory goes down. 
And then the further away from the flood, people's memories are short. Mm -hmm. And so right when Harvey came and it hit so many homes, everybody was like, no, 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 I'm never going to buy a flood house. Then a year later, oh, that happened a year ago and it hasn't flooded in a year. And then now we're three years post Harvey and we haven't had any water even threaten this home. So people become a little more lenient the further away from the flood event, for sure. Has anybody, you know, I, I've seen these, you know, construction projects along Bray's Bayou where they're widening and deeping and redoing the bridges with, you know, you know, Stell Link and Buffalo Speedway and Hillcroft, those streets of the big bridges over the, this massive bio where a lot of the flooding. What's going to, is the, all this flood control work, which it seems to be going rather slowly, I admit, uh, but, you know, the, will, it, will this uh, stigma, stigmatization of these properties decrease as there's a, you know, a testing, like you mentioned earlier, a testing of, well, you know, I think that the flood control repairs made a difference and these areas, these properties, maybe, maybe it's not going to be as big of a, a stigma and a, a tag on these properties that flood. It will, was that going to play an issue ever? I think so. I think there were, especially in the Meyerland area, I think there's a lot of people that felt very optimistic once they saw the bios get widened and they saw some big rain events where the bios held the water. I think that that is always, um, I think that always lightens the load a little bit for of worry. So in the memorial area, they did a lot of drainage work. And so I think it's much easier for a buyer to feel comfortable knowing that it flooded, but there was remediation work done to the area to try to avoid that from happening again. Doesn't mean it will avoid it, obviously, but less the chances are less because they've done some remedial work to the neighborhood. But I do think there's some neighborhoods where they didn't do any remedial work and people go, you know, this is a neighborhood that continually floods. And so count me out. And those neighborhoods are still hurting. Yeah. That's, uh, well, hopefully we won't see, hopefully we won't see another big freeze with, you know, <laughs> single digit temperatures. And hopefully we won't see another Hurricane Harvey event. It's been, you know, not 2017, the last part of August. That was, uh, that was a trying time for Houston. And, and we're, uh, but, I think Houston has a lot of resilient folks. And oh, man, we've been tested. We have been tested. And the community steps up. And, um, and you know, I think that flood control is something that's on everybody's mind. And, and I think that there will be, I, I think there's, it's going to be a long haul to get areas taken care of that really need to be taken care of. But at least baby steps are better than no steps. And I definitely see that happening. Lifted. You know, those those homes looked odd in the beginning, and I don't think they look so odd right now. Some of the homes that um, in Ireland that got actually lifted, that was a concept that none of us uh, were used to. And it seems like in Ireland, especially, you see so many of those homes lifted with a beautiful apron underneath them where it just looks normal today. So it doesn't look so the, odd. The key is that the, the, the apron, as you call it, underneath, if yeah. they do it right, then Hey, it's, it looks cool. Now, and I know you—you um, you also experienced uh, you know, tragedy there during Harvey uh, with your personal home. I did, I did, and I'm still here. I'm, <laughs> I'm loyal. <laughs> so you, but I will tell you, I don't sleep the same as um, other people do when it rains. I think a lot of people just curl up and cuddle up and love the rain. I don't. I probably get up about every 15 minutes, look out my door and see how high the water is. So I'm looking forward to the day where when it rains, I can, um, I'm moving to a high rise. So I'm looking forward to the day when it rains and I can just look outside and go, not happening here. If it happens it here. Well, no problem. problem. <laughs> no, I know. That's a good. All right. Amy Bernstein, Bernstein Realty here in Houston. Uh, you know, Thank you so much for taking some minutes to talk with us and talk about this market. And uh, you, you've been great. You're always uh, up to up to date on what's going on, and I appreciate you taking time. Well, I appreciate it, and you know, I'm 
I'm a huge follower of yours and a huge fan of yours, you know, and I, I, um, I applaud you for all your projects that you're working on because they're all so interesting. And I love that you can read your articles and know everything that's going on. It's kind of, it's kind of the cliff notes of what's going on in Houston. And I love it. So thank you for doing what you do as well. Thank you, Amy. All right. You're the best.